How's it going, fellow club members? This is Leo Damascus with the Steam Controller Fan Club. The Hat in Time official Twitter has said that the Steam Controller is not a good controller to use for platforming games. I wholly disagree, and I'm going to use their game to prove it. So here we are in game. You can see I've got some some fairly simple platforming going on. There were a couple of enemies here, but I cleared them out before recording. But anyway, you can probably see that while I am going around, that I am jumping while at the same time adjusting the camera. I'm sort of doing it a little bit excessively right now just to drive home the point, but that's one of the things that I truly value about the Steam Controller, is just that the I have the ability to keep the camera at all times. So that, that's one of the driving forces, and here's how I'm doing that in this platforming game. So, if we pull up the, con the configurator here, you can already see that, that what I'm doing is I have my jump command mapped straight to the trackpad. And it's it's just as simple as that. I uh, treat the trackpad just like you would with any other thing. I have the, the joystick values set kind of high in order to make sure that I'm getting a good response out of it. And also some good responses and the and the small movement precision. It makes it feel actually very smooth when I'm moving around the camera here. But because I have that mapped to the mouse-like joystick, it's not an uncomfortable way to do it like you would see with a regular joystick because the trackpad kind of feels like one big button. But you're combining those two those two aspects into one so that you're never losing control of that and because of that inside of the actual game settings uh, they have the option I'm I think it's under game settings to set it up so that you're always in control of the of the camera like this camera assist thing I, I turn that off because I'm looking to get manual camera controls and that does a whole lot to improve your ability to maneuver around these various platforms. Another thing that I'm doing with the configuration that I like, uh, if we pull this up here, you'll see that I have the select hat option on joystick move. Now what that's doing is it's going to apply this hat selection action layer. And then the action layer is going to remove if that, if the outer ring binding is ever uh, released, so it's not being triggered anymore. And until that point, it's going to hold down the left stick click, which is what I've remapped the hat selection thing to. Now you're also going to notice if you're if you're looking at this that we have these different. Uh, glyphs popping up that say LG to use your ability that's referring to the left grip. Uh, what I've done is I've actually gone into some of the Hat and Time files and changed them up so that they can look a bit more Steam controllery. So let's actually close the game and I'll go over there so that you can see a little bit more about what's going on. Now I have the GOG version of the game. So we're going to try and find that here and I will pull it up in just a moment. So here we are here already in the the game files. What you want to do is go to the Hat and Time game folder and then under there config and then under there game pads. And you'll see I have a couple of different ones for the Xbox 360. I the default one is the the one that you want to enter. I just have that so that I can quickly swap between different configurations. So on this controller name thing, uh, initially it said Xbox 360. I changed it to Steam tr controller, and that way the the pop-up 
talking about the new input says, oh, I'm actually detecting the Steam controller here. Now the buttons on the left, there's a couple of those that, that you want to change. Uh, for me, I changed the bumpers to grips so that I could use the, the bumpers for other things. And the select button I changed to the right bumper, and in my configuration I have it mapped there. But this configuration file that you're looking at here, uh, the game, A Hat in Time, is going to actually look at this and find the, the names and the icons and the colors there in order to dynamically create the various glyphs that they have in game. And because of that, you can do some, some very simple changes here, like I changed the D-pad down to analog down. It's still going to show the, the D-pad glyph because they, they don't really have anything else built into it, but it will look quite a bit better. And if, if it ever prompts in game, it's going to actually refer to the, the right trackpad for, for those kinds of situations. But the numbers that, that they have there are the, the buttons that, that match up with the various X input controls. So you want to look at what you have right there and map the, the buttons accordingly and then go down to, to here where it says actions and you want to select the number of the button that you want to use. Like I, I wanted the right trackpad click to be able to jump. So I set it to button ID 9 which is going to do that. And I've also got on the interact button. Uh, I didn't I sometimes default to pushing the A button instead of the the B button, which is the default for the game. This is also the only the only action in the game that doesn't dynamically update. If you if you do change it to to a button other than B, it's actually going to show E on the on the pop-up instead, which is the default key keyboard binding. So that's a little bit annoying, but something to be aware of. So what I did was I had it set so that either B or A w would do it. And by having B on the, s on the top there, it's going to use the normal B glyph, but still respond to A. And other than that, just change things around to make sure that, that they match the, the way that I like to use them. And by doing that, it actually updates the glyphs in game. So if we pull it up again, let's actually take a little bit of a look at that. And you can see just with the, the intro there that I initially had uh, the Steam controller pop up. Let's actually activate the keyboard quickly so that you can see it's got new input keyboard there. But as soon as I press any button on the Steam controller, it says new input Steam controller because it's reading it from that config file. And I'm not going to be able to use the jump button in order to interact with the things like I would if I was uh, just remapping entirely through the configurator. But the A and the B buttons work just fine, like you would expect them to. So now that we are back in game, you can see the glyphs are coming up when I'm trying to slide along there. The B is going to come up and look normal, but just so that you can see, if I press the A button, that's going to interact with it just as well. And so if you're used to more Xboxy kinds of controls like me, uh, that's definitely going to help out. And if we go into one of the levels here, you can also see some of the other glyphs that I have set up. So we're going to go ahead and open up one of these. So now here we are on top of this tower here. And when we go over this, you're going to see it says AS standing for analog stick to swap hat. 
And that matches exactly with what I'm doing here. I want the ice hat for this particular one. And then it says LG to use your ability, so that means left grip. And I do that, and everything is matching up with what I see on screen. And now that we're floating in, in place here, I think I'm going to end it on that. So, yeah, the Steam Controller is actually a fantastic controller for platformers. So, I definitely recommend giving it a try. And try setting your jump button to that trackpad. It's, um, it's a thing that I've been doing in every platformer that I play now. And I'm finding that it actually helps me a lot to be able to uh, keep complete control over everything that I'm doing in game. A lot of people will complain about the cameras in their various platformers. I never have that problem because I don't lose control of the camera at any point. So I, I definitely recommend giving that a, that a try for yourself. But that's everything that I wanted to talk about. So I will see you all in the next club meeting. This is Leo Damascus, and I'm signing off for now. Take care, guys.